Hello, this is Lori Michelle with today's message from the Mashiach. Today, I'm responding to your emails. I received a couple of emails in just the past half day with some comments and questions that I want to respond to. And thank you, first of all. First and foremost, thank you for reaching out and telling me that you're reading my book that I wave like a flag, the Torah part two, Blindsided by Messiah. I'm very grateful that more and more people are reading and learning and watching these videos. It shows me that there's goodness in the world and that people are opening up and opening their minds to listen to me. And you may not know that I'm Mashiach right now, and that's okay. I'm not trying to be the Mashiach, and I'm not trying to convince anyone of anything. I'm simply telling the truth and sharing information and sharing Hashem's voice, the king of the universe. So the first email that I want to respond to was someone who reached out, who said that they were reading my book for a while and your, your identity is safe with me. I'm not interested in revealing anyone's identity. So calm down if you're worried. Don't worry, you're safe with me. I'll protect you. Um, you had mentioned that you're reading my book and that while our opinions might differ, you respect me and wish me blessings. And I appreciate that you said that because a lot of people are going to read my book and watch these videos and take exception to some of the things that I'm sharing and your opinions will differ. You were raised with different information. Many people, you have different ideas and that's your blessing, your free will choice to have your opinions but I have recorded a video maybe a year or so ago about opinions and what I share, I want to clarify, are my beliefs and they feel like my opinions, but they're truthful. There are the truth. There are opinions that are not aligned with reality, the truth. And right now in the world, in the end of days, it's very hard to know what's true and false, as you can see. All you have to do is look at the news feed, and we don't know what's true or false. So what I share with you is not just my beliefs, which they feel like they're my opinions, but I am assured and I check in with Hashem, God, the king of the universe, and there's only one, that what I share is spot on the truth. So I hope at some point in time, you will understand that this is not opinion. And if I'm wrong, I want to be corrected. I must share the truth. I must be aligned with the truth and accuracy. And that's very important right now in the end of days. So the person who wrote that email and said that while our opinions may differ as often happens, and yes, it does. And yes, you're entitled to your opinions. What I pray for you is more than blessings to you. I pray that your opinions become completely aligned with the holy truth. Always, always, always. And it's a goal. It's a goal that we all must espouse to strive for the truth in every moment. And I'll leave it at that. The next thing that you stated was that you had an idea that you wanted to share with me that I should put an electronic version of my book on my website and give it away for free. And I want to answer that because it's a suggestion that has been made over the past couple of years to me before. And even offering an ebook, a Kindle book, 
on Amazon, people have asked, why don't you offer an electronic book? Because that's how I read my books. I would prefer a Kindle book. And the answer is, I have been instructed never to have an electronic version of Blindsided by Messiah, the Torah part two. The Torah, the five books of Moses, the five books of Torah, costs quite a bit of money. And you must pay for it to have that Torah. And this, in the words of Hashem, the king of the universe, and I, I don't expect everybody to believe that right now. Someday I pray that you will know that that's true. He says, this is the Torah part two. I don't say that. This is my book, my book my life, my way. I wrote it with the help of Hashem, every keystroke. And I just pray that you will read it, you absorb what I'm trying so passionately to share with everyone, but free is not in the cards. As a point of fact, today I discussed that idea with Hashem. I know it will never happen. You will always have to purchase the Torah part two, which is a $36 purchase price, double high, two times 18, not an accident, a price that he chose for my book. You'll always have to pay for it. And he says in the future, it will cost even more. How much more? I don't know. And I don't know what the future will bring. He shows me the future. He tells me it's coming that we will all gather together and learn Torah together in Forms for Learning, Running on Love, the Charity of World Peace, will host very large events. And we will pull this book out and pull it apart. And I'll be answering your questions the way I'm answering them online now, anonymously. He's shown me large events where people are holding this book and have notebooks and they're writing notes and I'm talking to you and everybody is sharing and asking questions and that's the future. He just said, yes, it is. I wish the future was here now, but I am very grateful that you're reading the book and watching these videos because I put a lot of effort into everything that I do and it's, in invested, my soul's invested with love and passion to reach you and reach your soul. Your, what you think of me is your business. What your opinions are about everything that I speak about is your choice. And I pray for you and everyone, the person who made the suggestion of free copies of my book and about your opinions differing from mine. I pray for you that all of your thoughts and beliefs become aligned with him, capital H-I-M, and you're aligned with the truth in every moment. And that's where we all have to go as humanity. And the next question that I'm going to address was someone who was watching, also reading the book. Thank you. I'm so happy for you that you decided to read my book. God bless you, and I hope that you, you feel fulfilled and you learn a lot about what I'm trying to share so passionately with you. But you also said you were watching my videos and you watched specifically a video that you had a question about. And it was life lesson number 20 uh, about free will. Free will brought us slavery, polygamy, not God's intentions, that one. That one rubbed a few people the wrong way. I don't show, by the way, people's reactions. You can't see thumbs up or down. And I don't allow comments. And the reason I don't is I want you to have your own opinions. Referring back to the previous question, I want you to formulate your own ideas. I don't want you to be swayed by stuff on the internet and comment threads right now are strewn with evil speech and negativity. And even if it's positive, I want you to choose. So this one, 
hit a few nerves and someone emailed me that at time stamp five minutes on that video that it stirred something in this person and he wanted me to elaborate. So I watched the whole video because I have hundreds of videos and I don't even remember yesterday what I ate for lunch or what I said yesterday. So I watched the whole video and I took a few notes. And let me read my notes. A timestamp five minutes of lesson 20. I, I spoke about how Hashem, God, he intervenes sometimes that free will reigns supreme. Backing up just a little, slavery and polygamy are choices, evil choices. And in this world, you have a choice in every single moment between evil and goodness. And that gives you freedom. In God's model for creation, you are free. And that's important to Hashem. He doesn't want little God robots. So at timestamp five minutes, it says he, capital H-E, intervenes sometimes, most of the time, when you're choosing between good and evil, he just watches and he allows and he allows and he allows and he doesn't intervene. He wants you to choose. He, capital H-E, God, knows everything about what you're thinking. He knows all about the people around you. He knows the circumstance. He knows why you're here and your life's purpose. So I said this in the video, if he loves you, he will intervene. So what does that mean? And I think that's what probably pressed a nerve. If he loves you. And I also said that his intervention, if he intervenes, may be painful. He may whack you over the head and drop you to your knees. And why? Because you require it. Because he loves you. He will beat you up out the head and drop you to your knees if he loves you. And so what do I mean by that? I mean, it's like a shepherd with a stick. And the shepherd is gathering the sheep. And if a sheep strays, he'll make the sheep go the right way and hit the sheep, right? But if you don't care about the sheep, go ahead, go get lost. <laughs> do what you want. There's an expression that religious Jewish people who observe Torah say that if Hashem, God, hasn't whacked you in the head and beaten you silly in, in more than 40 days, I heard a Rebetzin say this, that, oh, no, I'm in trouble. They consider it an act of love when he punches you. <laughs> and... He said it's true, but his interventions could be a blessing. All the time he blesses us in ways that people don't recognize. Um, a beautiful young couple being blessed with a pregnancy and a new baby. A blessing, of course it's a blessing. Blessings happen all the time. Every time you sip a glass of water, it's from him. Say thank you. You are blessed every day without even realizing it. So he knows, I wrote this note down, he knows what you're here to achieve. Everybody has a life mission and he knows you, whoever you are. I don't know who you are. And I know who sent this email, but I don't know you personally, but he does. And it's truly amazing. I can't explain to you how he does it. He's just, blah. When he's speaking to me, what I want to impart to you is I feel like I am the only being in the entire universe. He um, infuses me with such love 
and his it feels like his full attention is in every single syllable of everything he says to me and everything I utter to him, he's hanging on every word. Yet, I know he knows everything about you, whoever you are. He knows every single hair on your head. He knows your mother, your father, what you just ate, what you didn't eat. He knows what you're gonna do tomorrow. And most of the time, free will means he will just stand back and allow, and allow, and allow. There have been times where I went running and my mind wandered a little bit and I twisted my ankle and got injured. And I let out, this is about six years ago, I was running and I twisted my ankle. I was busy bopping to a Miley Cyrus song. I like her. And I... I let out a hush. I thought I broke my ankle. I couldn't run for three days and I cried. And I said, Why did you let me do that? Hush. He said, You need to pay attention, Lori. It could have been much worse. I could be running in traffic and God forbid get run over by a car because I'm busy bopping to a Beatles song. So he taught me a lesson in that moment. Pay attention. Watch your footing. And he let me feel the pain of being not in the moment. Do you see what I'm saying? So sometimes he intervenes and sometimes he'll let you twist your ankle, break your leg, God forbid, get in a car accident. It looks cruel sometimes. We see so much hardship around the world, but it all has a purpose and it all has meaning. And now in the end of days, it's our purpose to learn what he wants, to learn his rules, to learn how to choose, good and evil in every moment, and to learn how to choose spot on perfect in every moment. And now I'm gonna say something that hopefully won't ruffle too many feathers. He says, I never trip up. I never choose evil. I don't know how I do it. I think that I'm choosing wrong all the time and I repent daily, daily. That's what I do. I am so in the moment of wanting to choose goodness and be the best I can be. And I give every moment my full attention and my full effort, except of course, when I'm zoning out to music. But my point is that it's possible. And he just said, yes, it is. So that's what I'm here to teach how to choose better in every moment. I hope you will continue to watch these videos from the beginning to the end. And if you decide to read the Torah part two, or if you're reading the Torah part two, please don't skip around. Everything I wrote in this book has a rhyme and a reason, and I tie it up all in the end in a neat little bow. And I have students who are reading this for the fourth and fifth time. And every time they read it, it blows their mind because they find something they missed the last time. It's a lot like the Torah, God's Torah in that way, but it's very deep. And it doesn't seem that way. It seems like a simple read. He just said, no, it doesn't. Uh, I hope you enjoy it but I hope you learn from it. So I hope I answered your questions. If I didn't, email me. I'm really interested to hear what you have to say and I wanna help you and I want us all to come together and do this at live learning forums, Running on Love, Forms for Learning. I hope it's soon, Hashem. He says it is, but he's eternal, so soon, what does that mean? He says it means soon. <laughs> God bless you. Sending you my love and prayers for world redemption. Let's get on the road. I'm ready. God bless you.